Welcome to the Cheapskate Chronicles, the show where we find the highest quality games on Zeem. Zeem? Wow, this new website called Zeem. Yeah. The show where we find the highest quality games on Zeem for zero dollars and zero cents, plus tax, which is also zero dollars and zero cents. I decided to cut the lower quality games out of this series because in my mind it was a waste of time and I want to provide more value to you. We, I mean I, got some admissions from the ethernet that I will now analyze. I want this series to be centered around your submissions. The first one was submitted by Yoshi OST and is a fast-paced run-and-gun crowd control game. When I first loaded up the game, the music reminded me of one of those 1 in 1000 plug-and-play controller games, which I'm now questioning the legality of since I'm a decade older now and understand the concept of copyrights, patents, and contracts. However, while I was jamming out, it suddenly got uncomfortably, um, weird. It sounded like it was spazzing out before it looped back to normality. Great job, Maestro. The final very bad thing about this, and mind you, we haven't even loaded up the game yet, is the cursor doesn't go all the way across the screen. Not only could I not change it to full screen, which is what I was trying to do initially, but I literally couldn't start the game. So, because of this idiotic UI experience, I had to Google this glitch, noticing that I wasn't the only one with this problem. Since your game company here, what are you doing with your life? You've already made a sequel and still haven't fixed this problem with the flip. And learned that I had to plug in a controller in order to change it to full screen, in order to be able to click everything, in order to get on with my ow, on with my life, in order to get rid of these stupid start game glitches. Now that we're finally at the game this better be worth my time and it actually was surprisingly i mean it was it was actually a very fun experience despite the extremely aggravating user interface experience where i literally had to creep into my brother's room love you brother steal his controller plug it into my computer to temporarily fix this problem, which by the way isn't a permanent fix because every single time you load up the game you have to do this insert game company here, please fix this for all that is good and holy, yes I'm still upset over this, okay leave me alone. Once the fun actually starts, you don't want it to end. Unlike my life for obvious ahem reasons. The game itself is easy to learn with a simple tutorial. Combat is very smooth, unless you use a controller, which I strongly disrecommend, as shown by this very, very, very obvious side by side comparison for your convenience and not mine. You can find relics by holding down E and get pinged in a not so hand holdy way, and is also a fun little challenge after slaughtering some creatures. You can either rush into battle with either an array of assorted guns or use a glove that basically one hit kills certain creatures and make a chain reaction attack for less swings, which probably means less damage. On you. Or you can lay low and probably be smarter by taking less hits and hiding behind various cover spots. Probably do that. The surprising part about Relic Hunter Zero is how much strategy is almost necessary in order to progress forward. Sure, you can get lucky and just keep dodging while spraying your prey, but most likely, unless you're a pro, you're gonna die because stamina is a thing. Instead of not being a pro, there's always the possibility of breaking worm-filled crates into your enemies, or aiming a red rocket block for an explosive attack. Basically, there's two ways to play this game, and if you're more strategic about your actions, the easier it's gonna be to progress. You threw my wolf in the fire! This next one was also submitted by Yoshi OST, except this one is a tabletop game. It's a simple turn-based strategy game that's quite easy to learn. I think we want to get rid of this, this stupid healer. Yeah, we're gonna go with this. Oh. Got him. Is very fun. Yeah. Wait, you passed. Why would you do that? Okay. And has a great medieval art style with music to match this certain aesthetic. I normally don't really like games where the whole point of it is to use cards to attack since I've had bad experiences with a certain Kingdom Hearts game that shouldn't ever, 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 ever exist. But due to how simple it was for me to understand the mechanics, it ended up being quite the enjoyable experience that I wasn't expecting. If you want to jump into a game that has medieval themes, as well as card usage, then this game is for- the third was submitted by- The Company. I'm gonna go to space, space, yes, please, space, 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 go to space. P.S. Not enough info on Card Hunter. Um. 
okay then. Space Lord's opener sequence was fantastic and could have been a triple-A game. If those three stood for art styles, this is amazing animation that's very comic book-esque and arty and being impressed by this game while having the exact opposite reaction compared to, well, a, a certain game. Okay. Okay, okay. Okay, whoa. This game looks amazing and I haven't even started playing. After this great experience, we're greeted with a guy on the dashboard that tells you exactly what you need to know. Quick play will put you with your team on your first mission. I've never seen any main title screens like this before, but I'm very intrigued by it, and I'm surprised that more games to my knowledge haven't used this feature. I did some research to see if this guy had a name, but I couldn't find anything. So for the sake of time, we're gonna name him Gideon. Gideon strongly recommended the tutorial. Here's a quick combat tutorial which I strongly recommend. So I did it. Instead of a tutorial where you do things in order to learn how to battle, it's just a short video informing you about the mechanics. This would have been fine if I didn't click start match before watching the tutorial, so because of that I had to watch the tutorial about four times because the matchmaking kept interrupting the video and there was no way to fast forward or pause, yada yada, you get it. Since it isn't that popular of a game, matchmaking can take a while, especially if you want a specific arena. Not much we can do about this one, just hope that Steam recommends this game to more people and or more people make videos about it. Once in game, it can take a while to get used to the controls. One example, Q is punch and E is grab, which I got them mixed up way too many times which led me to several deaths. Another is realizing that each character has their own special ability, and it's different with each character, so I can't expect the tank to wall jump like an acrobat just because it's the same button. Combat starts to make sense once you realize that it's best to go about each villain on a case by case basis. It's best to turn Target them one at a time by initially shooting them, then finishing them off with a melee, rather than targeting an army. Or maybe even shoot from above if you're not a whale and are trying to avoid certain whales because they are immune to close range combat. From what I've played, there's three specific game modes. If there's more, I apologize I didn't play 15 hours of this game. Protect a guy, protect a spire slash blow up a spire, or protect your coolness by killing a giant boss and pretending to know what you're doing. Different game modes require different forms of strategy, which requires teamwork to better achieve these goals. So if I have friends to play with, or friends in general, my coolness would have been served. It's one of the better shooter games I've played recently, although I don't play many shooter games nowadays, so take that into consideration. I recommend it if you like Gears of War, since that's what this game reminds me of. Even though I played like five minutes of Gears of War, so honestly I can't really compare it to that due to my lack of knowledge. Hmm. Listen, it's free, it's good, it's multiplayer, please be my friend. Speaking of freeness, goodness, multiplayerness, and the power of friendship, the final one is submitted by Number Blue, and is a cooperative puzzle game. You don't have to describe it very carefully because there's a lot of very <sighs> okay. Similar. I knew absolutely nothing about this game going in, which is how I recommend you play it. Blue is down here, I think. So if you have Steam, a friend, a couple hours to spare, go play it right now. We Were Here is kind of like Keep Talking and Nobody Explodes. Except you keep talking and nobody explodes. I bring this up because there's two roles, the librarian and the explorer. One informs the other one of what to do, and you interact with each other in different ways. These various ways are spoilers! <laughs> <laughs> Unless you don't care about spoilers, then watch me and Zach's entire playthrough of it. The other aspect is the setting. It's a medieval art style, as we can tell by the dungeon walls. There's great atmospheric music to match the scenes that is also not distracting. The vibrant colors really pop, and are an easy contrast to the drab walls. If any of these games pique your interest, try them out and leave your experiences in the comments below.